Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned. Happy 4th of July weekend, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to L.A. Talk Live and the America Talk Live Broadcast Network, the absolute world leader in internet broadcast. With a very special presentation tonight, we have joining us live in our studios for a very special show that he has put together especially for you. Sergeant Randy Franklin joins us for a very special live episode of Probable Cause. Welcome, Sarge, back to the microphone. And uh, we're really happy to have you back, man. It's been quite some time since you've been here in the studios of LA Talk Live, broadcasting your own special segment. Now, some of our listeners and longtime audience might know you from such shows as Probable Cause that you did weekly uh, for some time here on LA Talk Live, helping people understand. Uh, their rights as it relates to the streets of L.A., I think more specifically. You are, in fact, the people's champion of your rights on the street. And once again, I want to give you a rousing round of applause for being back in the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now, once again, this is a very special presentation that we're doing tonight. Any of you out there who are listening, um, you can give us a call. The number is up on the screen right now. It's 323-473-3100. Once again, for those slow to the pen, 323-473-3100. I am your humble moderator for tonight, Richard Carr. And our topic with Sergeant Randy Franklin is going to be something very, very near and dear to my own personal experience out here in Los Angeles. If you've been a longtime listener and supporter of LA Talk Live, first of all, well, let me give you a rousing round of applause. Too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank you so much. Um, but you know that I'm from the East Coast. And uh, one of the most challenging transitions that people experience here in Los Angeles is transitioning your license, your driver's license, that is, if you're going to be here for any length of time, and meaning that you came here to live here, your registration, um, the transfer of tax for that car being in Los Angeles, um, perhaps having it smogged, which is a particular particular pet peeve of mine. Um, all of those things make transitioning to Los Angeles not just a day on the beach. Let's just put it like that. I, myself, have experienced quite a bit of, uh, I don't know how, purgatory, let's just call it. <laughs> you want to live here? Got to go through purgatory. And that is at the local offices of my DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. It has been memorialized in all types of sitcoms and comedies and TV shows, the whole experience of being at DMV in Los Angeles is one that actually makes you a Los Angelan if you survive it, even as a transplant. I myself as a, am a transplant. I moved here from the East Coast. and uh, In short, I went through all that stuff, man. And um, a couple of weeks ago when we had Randy on, we talked about this whole experience of The local LAPD impounding your car, literally taking your car from you off the street. You're in your car. Something's not right. We're going to take your car. Your car is gone. Your car is parked. Something's not quite right. Your car is impounded. Um, I got to tell you, man, that whole (laughs) smog test thing. Is probably one of the best traps 
the state and particularly this city, Los Angeles, has for people who buy dated cars when they get out here. Maybe get your first bins. It's um, 2002, 2008. And you driving around flossing and bossing. Yet, here comes that dreaded smog test. You don't know what it's going to cost. You don't know how much of a money pit that car is going to become trying to get its smog approved. So, you know, you go through the process. You go to DMV. You get that little stupid red sticker to put in your, the back of your window, which is only a moving permit, even though it says five or six, or in this case, seven 2016, it's really just a moving permit. It only allows you to move the car for 24 hours, as I understand, to take it to a place where it can be tested for smog. If it fails, you really need another one, but the cops aren't necessarily going to pull you over if it says seven. That big, stupid red seven in the back of your beloved German, American, whatever car you drive. I don't know. Once you get the smog thing, from that point on, it becomes truly life in purgatory at the DMV. Moving it, getting it smogged, failing, going again. That stupid piece of metal, plastic, and rubber that you so admire and adore becomes your worst nightmare and then one day out of the clear blue you're playing the song you picked a fine time to leave me lucille meaning that the city has come and confiscated it you're driving it down the road you've got it parked somewhere you think is off street and safe but they come and take your Everybody out there, adults, <laughs> put the kids in the room. They come and take your bitch. That is my experience with having more than one car, I'm ashamed to say, impounded by the city of Los Angeles. And hell, let's give them a rousing round of applause <laughs> for their hard work, diligence, and absolute expertise ability. In that area of being able to completely cripple you as a citizen from your job, your children, your wife, your family, taking your car. I never got that. Well, without further ado, let's get Sergeant Randy Franklin on the mic with us. He's been most patient with me as I delivered my <laughs> soapbox dissertation and thank you very much Sarge but you're really the expert here tonight and this is a very special presentation and folks if you're just tuning in tell your friends we've all been touched by it if you miss any part of this it's going to YouTube it's going to be on Ustream and we're going to post it on Sarge's page here on LA Talk Live and America Talk Live so you'll be able to go back and reference the many legal facts that he will serve up tonight on this very special edition of Probable Cause. So once again, Sergeant Randy Franklin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Uh, for the people out there, uh, I, I've had a lot of calls about people who having their cars impound. Uh, they'll call the show, the number we left for me on the show, and we have talked about uh, when they can and cannot Im impound your car. And for the most, car, uh, for the most uh, they cannot impound your car. And most of the time, they are to release your car and give your car back to you. But you don't know your rights, so you don't have any rights. Um, it, simply, if your car is parked on a private lot, I want people to know this. If you have it parked on a private lot and you are paying a fee for that lot, then they cannot impound your car regardless of how many dates or the time that is. The registration has gone behind and usually running that when people are trying to get their smog done you're trying to get things done on your car so that the police can't tow your car it's not on a public street you don't have it in the eyes of the public you were smart enough to say i'm gonna put it on a private lot and pay the 19 or 20 dollars whatever it costs to have your car put there until you can legally get through all the hoops that the dmv put you through so you can have your car uh, you have to know that if the police come on that lot and tow your car, what the first thing they're going to tell you, they have the right to do it. They're going to say on the 4000A, it's more than six 
a month and a day. And remember that we cannot impound your car unless your car as the registration has expired six months in one day. So if it's not six months in a day, your car, you only could get cited for unregistered vehicle, but you cannot be towed for unregistered vehicle. So if they tow your car and it's not six months in a day, then I'm going to tell you later on the remedy to go get your car back for free. But you're going to have the police talk to you and say, under this section, 4000A, uh, A and B, I can tow your car. I want you to go to 4000A and I want you to read down until you get to section, I think it's uh, section five. And it basically states that they cannot tow your car. Uh, I I'm sorry, on 4000A is three. Uh, 4,083, if your car is on a lot that you're paying a fee for. So it right there tell you your car cannot be towed. And and they're not going to tell you this. All right. Now, they're going to reference another one, 22651, and they're going to go to 22651O. I want you to go to 22651O5. Go down to five because they're not going to let you go down there. Go down yourself, and five says the same thing as 4,083, that your car cannot be towed off of a private lot. Now, the reason that the, the most police don't know the law themselves, so when you bring this up to them, I want you to remember the laws that I'm giving you so you can give them a copy of it, all right? And then when you go to the station, you have to ask for a impound hearing, and they have to give you a supervisor with the impound hearing, Who's going to come out and try to blow smoke up your butt about what you don't know. All right. Now, Sarge, I think it's important for us to take a moment out real quick uh, because it's been some time. And, you know, as the audience grows and, you know, we're actually pushing towards 11 million, as I'm told. I've been looking at recent statistics and we're breaking the 10 million audience mark for both live and on demand right. audience Big ups to Apple iTunes and all the old heads of iTunes. Apple iTunes 2 is a little bit more difficult for people to tune into us through if you right. aren't familiar with how to navigate. But all of our diehard iTunes fans out there in the R&B section who found us all the way back in 2009 and 2010 who were still helping to uh, support the station through your listenership, your audience ship, and also by spreading the word, uh, I, I thank you. But we're now pushing to 11 million as this station continues to grow. So we've got new listeners who tune in for the first time all the time. Um, let's give them the benefit of a, a bit of your background and your involvement with law enforcement and why you know what you know and, of course, why you're so passionate about this topic. I tell people, when I came out, just to let people know, I came out of Marine Corps, I went to college, and I decided that uh, – I needed to eat, so I became a uh, Los Angeles police officer in 1984, and I uh, did 30 years on law enforcement, uh, LAPD, and the whole time I've been on, I <laughs> wanted to champion the rights of people. Uh, I didn't join the police department to abuse people or lie on them or put them in a jail, and uh, you know there is a thin blue line. I, I decided that I was going to stay on the legal side of the thin blue line. And, and not the other side. Uh, so I didn't have to uh, basically uh, worry about uh, how I felt or if I love myself by uh, treating people bad uh, just because uh, somebody told me to. And if you uh, you can Google me, uh, I'll pop up. I'll pop up where the police uh, searched my house with uh, 50 SWAT officers and accused me of uh, being a dope dealer and everything else because I was letting people go out of the station because you were not guilty of anything. And as a sergeant and a supervisor, I had the power as a night watch commander to let you out. And I let you out. I mean, if I didn't let them rewrite reports, I didn't let them lie in their reports. Uh, if they wrote a report, the first time was the right time. And if your, uh, it, something in there didn't violate the law, you were free. If they brought me in front of you and uh, uh, brought you in front of me and uh and they told me a story that wasn't correct, you were free. If they told me stories that uh, that didn't violate the law, you were free. And I didn't have to wait an hour or two to have you sit on the bench with handcuffs. I needed you released, and I needed you released now. So th that's my background. Well, the fact is that you were, in fact, most vociferous in your advocacy for citizens' rights, especially as they relate to the street. One of the things I learned 
from you when I first met you is that, and I want to share this with you listeners out there, first time listeners and audience, first time tuners, we call you now. Um, if you don't know your rights, finish that for me. Sorry. You don't have any rights. You, you don't, don't have any. You don't have at any. street level as it relates to law enforcement. Knowing your rights is your burden. Yes. It's your responsibility. You can't be out there and then be in a law enforcement encounter and feel that your rights will violate it and do nothing about it, first and foremost. you got to do something about it. And then secondly, you can't just go back and bitch on Twitter and Facebook that F the police. No. If you know your rights, those or most Law enforcement officers are going to respect that you know your rights and going to respect those rights and respect you more. Am I absolutely right? Because it's calculated in that assessment. No, because you know what? Once you stop a police and you understand what your rights are and, and get me wrong, I, I'm not telling anybody you need to fight with the police when they stop you. Give them your driver's license. Give them your registration. I also say turn on your phone. Your phone ain't just for texting and stuff. Your phone is there. So if you get stopped or get in a situation, your phone should have your app up front where you're recording in video every word that's said. So it's not your word against his word or his word against yours. You have proof of what the conversation was. So if you get disrespected from the beginning, so you have that proof. And remember this, if the, you don't have to argue with a policeman. If he asks for the simple things like your driver's license, your registration, and your insurance, give it to him. If he disrespect you, the next question's out your mouth. The next thing out your mouth should be, I need to speak to a supervisor. I need to speak to one now. If he asks you to get out of your car on a traffic stop, you can get out your car. But ask for a supervisor while you're standing there. Uh, all of this is on the, the first uh, four or five shows. You can go back on L.A. Talk Live, and we have gone over this continuously about. Uh, we have indeed, Sarge. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We need to, fr from this night here, where we've got this special presentation going on, okay. probable cause with Sergeant Randy Franklin, we need to, you know, get those videos that you've done here in the studio back out on the web okay. as a follow-up to the work you're doing tonight. Because people really need to get this information. And you made a very important point before we went live tonight in mentioning that it's 4th of July weekend. Let me give a props to Uber, Lyft, and all of those other social network businesses who are going to be driving around the drunk over this holiday weekend. And thank God for getting them off the road for us. But some of you may be driving tipsy and or buzzed and you may find yourself in a most precarious situation in fact you might even get pulled over having not had a drink and get harassed because you got to think that law enforcement and uh public security is going to be at its height this weekend considering some of the tragic incidents that have happened recently throughout the globe. So law enforcement is going to be, you know. They're going to be out in force. Yeah. Just to let you know they're going to be out Good in force. Good way to put it. I'm sorry. I couldn't find those words. But and, and, and what put we that want, in perspective for us, Sarge, please. Yes. We, we don't want you to drive drunk or buzz or whatever. But uh, there, we don't want, you shouldn't let a, a $30 Uber uh, cost you $10,000 for drunk driving. Whoa. But you, you're going to run into some checkpoints, and we, we're going to move on I, 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 on this special edition for impounding because we you, a lot of people are going to park your cars in public parking lots, and you're going to run through checkpoints. And 90% um, of the time, I want you to know that the police have to legally pull over your car. Even if you get stopped for DUI, they have to pull over your car and let somebody – Come and get your car for you. They uh, can't just take it just no, because you, they can't you're take it. driving it drunk. It's not the car's fault. It's your fault. Right. If there's a non-drunk safe driver in that car, that you are intoxicated behind the wheel is one uh, crime. Um, that the car is in fully functional operation, um, someone can take that car. does not give them the right to take your vehicle right. by default. And you Correct. also, right, and you also have a time, as long as that checkpoint is up, that you can get on a phone and call someone who has not been out. What is that time, sir? Uh, as long as the checkpoint's out. They, so, 
if you are pulled over at a checkpoint, right? Because we can, you know, we've got like 90 minutes tonight. And we're only right and halfway check, through the first and, half hour. So if you're at a checkpoint, get pulled out your car, and you are determined to be DUI. under the influence, DUI. Yes, you can actually say, "Well, I'll tell you what. Okay, you got me. Put me in cuffs. Uh, I'll sit in the back of the van, but I, I'm." I, I want to call my relative, friend, family member, whatever, to come take my car back to my house because it's not my car's fault. Yes. They have to wait for that person. That person can show up, identify themselves. Now, can we stipulate a clause in the law that people who may be tuned in right now, maybe they're at work, about to get off, maybe they're driving, they don't have the ability to call in, whatever the case may be, and we, we'll give out the number. I'll give it out now. Once again, 323-473-3100, 323-473-3100, tonight's special edition of Probable Cause with Randy Franklin. Um, is there a clause in the law, a stipulation, a citation yes, that you what, can quote? What, what I want people to do, I and I tell you, the Internet, again, is not just for uh, Googling and texting each other and uh, point, trying to get a date. You. Uh, I want you to go online and I want you to type in LAPD special order number seven. Special order number seven. Right. Download LAPD. LAPD. In a Google search. Yes. And get the PDF form of it. It's seven pages. And everything we're going to talk about tonight is in there. And you can keep that with you in your car. It tells the police when they can and cannot impound it. Now, there was some controversy about uh, special order number seven with Chief Beck, and it went all the way up to the California Supreme Court. And it just came back last year that this order is valid and the LAPD has to abide by this order of towing your vehicle. So everything we reference to you, like if you go through the checkpoint and, and you don't have a driver's license, well, uh, if you can legally park the car, they can impound it. If you're in your driveway or you close to your driveway, they can't impound it. They're not supposed to impound your car. Virtually, it's almost impossible to tow your car unless you habitually uh, keep driving without a driver's license and they can prove it over the, the MDT that they have. Uh, you have tons of citations for driving. You've been warned about this before. They've given you tons of chances to correct this. And giving, back, giving you back your car and you still continue to do what they ask you to do, go straighten it out, get a driver's license, then they can impound your car. And then after all of that, they can place your car on a 30-day haul. But 90% of the time, they cannot tow your car. But the problem is you don't know when they can and cannot tow your car. So every time a policeman tells you that he can tow your car, you believe him. And then you got to take time from work and go through there to do an impound hearing. Now, the reason that Special Order 7 is out there is because LAPD was losing $300,000 plus in return fees. When, when your car get impounded, it's not the tow company fault, the OPG tow company. And OPG is Official Police Garage. So when you see OPG on the thing, it's Official Police Garage. They work with the city. Well, if the police tell them to tow your car and they tow your car, it's not their fault they towed your car. So even if you do an impound here and get your car back for free, the taxpayers, you, the citizen, have to pay for that police mistake because the tow company is going to get their money. And they're going to release your car to you and they have to release your car that day or that night. You don't have to wait forever for an impound hearing because some detectives on, on lunch break or, or he's out for the week on vacation, any detective in auto should be able to do an impound hearing that same day or the next day. And if they don't do it, then a sergeant at night should do it. So 24 hours a day, there is someone there to do an impound hearing for you to get your car out immediately because you might need it the next day for work. Now, Sarge, at what point? Other than the obvious, you know, you, you are a habitual offender. Um, you are driving without a license. You've been busted several times for um, driving under the influence. At what point are they able to tow your car other than those particular situations? You mentioned how, let's say, for example, well, let's say your registration is expired and yeah. you're in the car and you're driving it. You're in I'll give you a real tricky one because this okay. happened to me. 
And again, for our listeners and tuners out there, we call you tuners. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I was the victim of an impound. Uh, be- even after I had paid to bring the registration current, but had not received the stickers for the car, I showed the police officer, this is years ago, the canceled check with the cancellation stamp on the back from DMV and current insurance. And, you know, I never have a problem with my license. Right. I have probably the best license record in the world, uh, in America at least. Still, that individual impounded my car. Was that Is it legal? Is it legal? Within his rights. No? No, it's not. No. Because okay. you, had, you had proof that your car had, was, been, registered, had been registered. And, was properly insured. Right. And I had a legitimate driver's license. DMV tells us. He tells but only because I didn't have the stickers on the back. Of that's the car. all right. DMV tells us that they're six months behind at all times. Maybe they're whoa, three nights. Whoa, stop there. No, I did not know that. That yes. DMV has made it clear that they're behind by six months. Well, that's what. Yes. Now they might be three months. It's been a while for that's me. That's fine. Okay. But it might be three months as long as you but can they're show. Behind. Right. They're behind. It's like when you go to AAA or you go someplace they want you to do something with your car or you, you buy your registration over the Internet. We have to wait for your paperwork to get in the mail, but they give you a receipt stating that you have taken care of all that. Now, every policeman have the ability to go on, 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 uh, on the DMV website in their police vehicle or call in, and we can tell you whether you got your stickers or not, whether you registered or not, because... When DMV get the money. So that's why I tell everyone, listen, request a supervisor and pray that he knows what he's doing because some of them don't know either. But I'm teaching you your rights today. So all you have to do, you can check me too. just go online and check everything that I say. Give them your details, uh, how they can get in touch with you. And again, we're going to open up the phone lines after the break. Give them some details on how they can really connect well, with you. Well, right now I'm okay. Right now I'm trying to um, passing a law. I want all police to carry a one million dollar liability policy for their wrongful acts. Now it, it's not an anti police bill. Don't don't get me wrong. Yep, we, that, we, well, we're going to break that down after the break. But you've got a bill out that you are uh, submitting. That, that we should vote where on. Where police officers have to become responsible for their actions, in particular as it relates to violence against the citizenry. Absolutely. Amazing. And, and, and that's what we want to do. Uh, you have to understand that I, I, on the website I'm going to give you, on my Facebook page, I have a picture of the Selma Bridge. And 50 years later, nothing has changed. It hasn't changed since the, rot, the Watts riot or, or any other protest you can think of. Because you don't effectively know how to hurt the police or control the police. Therefore, everything you do almost is ineffective. And your politicians and your leaders are also really not on your side. And I'm going to explain that to you. So if they're listening, you tell them to come talk to Sergeant Randy Franklin. Because I'm going to teach you why. And we're going to go over situations. uh, uh, Because you don't ask the right questions. And you don't really know who's on your team. But this law is for their misconduct. What people don't understand is simple. Every time you see a settlement against a policeman for one to two million dollars, we don't pay a dime of it. Not one dime. It comes out of your money, the taxpayers. You pay for it. So you can stand up and go, yeah, they got two million dollars. They got two million dollars of your money. They didn't get zero of the police money. It didn't come out the police budget. It don't come from the police union. It comes from no one but you. You pay for our misconduct. And it's like giving a rich kid a new car. I crash it, you give me another one. So you're never going to correct this until you do it the right way. And I'm going to teach you how to do it the right way. And in the context of our conversation tonight with Sergeant Randy Franklin, Probable Cause, has your car been impounded? A little earlier on in the show, while Sarge was talking, I flashed this news uh, article, and I'll read the headline to you for those of you who might not be able to see it. Vehicles for ransom, city attorney says. Towing companies have a lot of power. They can snatch your car from private property and explain why later. Meanwhile, the towing storage fees will add up, and the burden of proof is on you. 
to determine vehicular innocence. Well, that's a word, vehicular innocence. We'll talk more about that with a true pro, Sergeant Randy Franklin, 30 years retired LAPD, and uh, myself, yours truly, uh, your humble moderator for tonight, Rigid Carr. I'm so overwhelmed by the knowledge. We'll be back. I got so much trouble on my mind. Much confusion. Drug addiction. No convictions. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and hosts of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Designs by Ardina, preserving heritage and building legacies through art. Turn your favorite photos into personalized, one-of-a-kind, customized artwork. Designs by Ardina offers innovative and creative options for printing on aluminum, acrylic, canvas, with custom framing and matting services available upon request. Designs by Ardina also offers photo restoration, portrait art, digital photo albums, and even basic business printing services. For more information and a customized quote, visit www.designsbyardina.com. That's www.designsbyardina.com. Or call 323 323- 455-1251 that's 323-455-1251 designs by Ardina proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network what would your life be like if you needed blood transfusions every two or three weeks just to survive and if you had to worry about all the iron from that blood making your heart and liver shut down that's just what life is like for a person with thalassemia If two people who each carry the trait for thalassemia have a child, there's a 25% chance with each pregnancy that the child will have thalassemia. For more information, visit the Cooley's Anemia Foundation at www.thalassemia.org. That's T-H-A-L-A-S-S-E-M-I-A. Or call 212-279-8090. Did you know sickle cell disease is the most common genetic disorder in the world? In fact, millions of people are affected by sickle cell across the globe. Don't you think that a disorder of this magnitude deserves more attention? Get educated. Create awareness today. This ad was sponsored by Sickle Cell 101 Education Plus Awareness. Please visit sc101.org. That's sc101.org to learn more. We could spend the next 59 seconds telling you all about the all-natural ingredients of the Pura and how they have been shown in clinical studies to regulate T-cells and inhibit the expansion of B-cells. But we thought you would want to hear how Lupira has improved the lives of those diagnosed with lupus. Taking Lupira increased my stamina. I worked long hours. The midday dose always came at the right time and helped me complete the workday. My biggest issues were insomnia, fatigue, headaches, depression, tension, and mood swings. I feel that Lupura has helped in alleviating most of these issues. My insomnia has gotten better, therefore relieving the headaches, fatigue, and tension. I know I am not at 100%, but I am a whole lot closer than I was before, and I feel a lot healthier doing it with Lupura. Lupira was developed from its founder's real-life experience with autoimmune conditions. You can learn more when you go to Lupira.com, including taking part in the 90-day challenge. Visit Lupura.com today. That's L-U-P-U-R-A.com. Lupura.com. Proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. SoCal NOMA, the Southern California chapter of the National Organization of Minority Architects, is hosting its seventh annual three-day summer camp on three successive Saturdays, July 9th, July 16th, and July 23rd, 
for ages 10 through 15 with a reception and award ceremony on July 30th at Southern California Institute of Architecture. Campers will enjoy a one-day field trip created to engage new ideas for famous and important local community projects. Day two of the camp will be hands-on exploration of the campers in eight qualities as it relates to building design experience. And day three will include learning how to use a three-dimensional computer software program to create the built environment. To learn more and to register, Go to SoCalNOMA.org, that's S-C-A-L-N-O-M-A dot org, and click on the Camp NOMA page. Be sure to register today at SoCalNOMA.org. SoCalNOMA, proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, in the background, the sound, one of my favorites, DMX, representing Rough Riders, what up? One of my favorites from him, man, slipping, falling. Can't get up. Ever felt like that? Ever had your car took? Ever been impounded? Had to get to work. Had to pick up the baby that night. Had to pick up your new girlfriend. Had to pick up your mom then. And some son bitch came and towed your car for some lightweight bullshit. No violence. No um impediment to civil liberties. No reason other than oppression. Ever felt like that? Yeah. Word. So we're back with Sergeant Randy Franklin. Special episode, special edition, probable cause, hosted by a 30 year veteran of the LAPD. Uh, Randy, welcome and thank you once again, man. You're welcome. For You're welcome. Your investment. You're welcome. And, uh, your time here today, man. So, anyway, getting back to the topic at hand. We're talking about empowerment today. Um, it ain't just the poor. It ain't just the broke. Uh, wealthy, everybody gets impounded. Man, I've been to that impound yard, and I've seen some mighty nice cars. And thought to myself, well, if I lose mine, maybe I'll go back and buy that one. But, of course, that never happened. Um, I want to open up our phone lines to all of our listeners out there. And I know you may be at work and... Um, right now you're busy, you know, you got a busy weekend planned ahead and, uh, this doesn't matter to you quite as much right now, but in, in maybe 24 to 36 to 48 hours, or let's say by Tuesday morning of July, you may find yourself in a situation where this information is extremely valuable. And once again, I want to give a rousing round of applause to our special host tonight. Randy Franklin. Thank you. Thank for you. Coming in to share this information. So once again, for those slow to the pin, 323-473-3100, 323-473-3100 with Randy Franklin live in our studios right now. Get at him. Come here when you, uh, you got a question about that. Uh, I'll tell you some uh, situations I had in the last uh, month that people have called me. I had a friend who uh, had his vehicle stolen from church. Stolen and, uh, by that you mean? Someone stole it. Uh, took it without literally, his permission. Right. Literally took yeah. it. Not a tow truck. No. Because oh, we talked and, about that. And he was going down the road, and he actually saw his car on the back of a pick apart truck. Okay. And they were taking, I guess, the pick apart. He flagged down the driver and got the driver to pull over, and he told the driver, that's my car, and it's stolen. So he called the police. The police showed up. Not one, two units. Uh, showed up, and you think out of four policemen, somebody would have knew the law or figured it out. So they got his car off of the pick apart truck, and they asked him. Uh, he said, "Here's my registration in the glove boxes, uh, my insurance and stuff like that." And they found all that, and then they asked him for the pink slip, slip. to his car. Mm-hmm. Why? Like you would have that in your car? Like you would have that? Or any feet to have and translate at any local tag shop into the thief's name 
Absolutely. Who would have their pink slip in their car? No one. Well, of course. So what, uh, they impounded his car because even though he made the police report, hmm. he proved it was a car. They checked it on their MDT. The registration, everything MDT came being, back to him. MDT uh, meaning? That's our uh, uh, mobile digital. digital terminal <laughs> it's when you see a police car they got a computer in the car they can run your license and stuff on it and they check do right. that and uh they impound his car because he didn't have his pink slip on him and he said i can go home and get it but they said they couldn't wait so they told it so he called me and i had him go to police station and make a impound hearing and at that point, they tried to keep his car and still make him pay for it because they didn't want to pay the fees for their mistakes. So eventually, uh, with my help on the phone, he got his car back because sometimes you just can't walk out of police station. You have to learn to make a complaint against the policemen that don't know the law. Now, not knowing the law might be ignorance for someone else, but it is not for your police officer. A police officer should not claim that he's ignorant of the law. Because they're a law enforcement. They're law enforcement. That's their job. You don't take your car to a mechanic shop and he'll know nothing about cars. And you don't go to an auto mechanic shop if you need dental work. Absolutely. And you don't go to a dentist if you need your tires changed. Correct. Right. So we, Makes won't, perfect sense. we won't let the police... They don't have that. an excuse no. to plead ignorance no. to the law because they're law enforcement. Law enforcement. And their yeah. sergeants at the station, hopefully he knows and sometimes they don't, will try to cover their ass and make you believe that you need to go pay for the empire hearing so they don't have to tell their superiors that they made a mistake. So I want you to stick to your guns like I made him stick to his. And we went back and forth for two days before I told him, listen, I, I asked you to make a complaint against the policeman. But you will not. A lot of stuff we're going to tell you, and we don't hate the police. But if you tell a police and show a police with the law that he has made a mistake and he's consistent on punishing you or treating you bad, you have to correct his behavior but by Sarge, making a complaint against him. When you say we, that is a very broad statement. And again, all respect do and, and no intent to challenge you on your comment. I understand what you mean. Very clearly. But when you say we, you Me have who? to accept the fact that you are not a part of we. Um, you're part of we in the broader sense in that you're no longer you, you are retired from LAPD. Right. And, and I want to clarify my point here. And that is this. Um, you're not as we as you. you uh, uh, you're more we than you used to be. But you're uh, you get it. Meaning no. that we don't want trouble. I, I made that too complicated. Let me make this very clear. We don't want any problems. Absolutely. We don't want trouble. We are trained to not challenge police authority from childhood, from elementary school. I understand that. So the notion that we're going to, we, meaning including you now, yes. that you're retired, are just going to walk out of the police station without, without any guff, that's normally what we do. But to go in there and start guff, it's so easy for them to intimidate us. Now, let's make this more visceral for our listeners and or let's say tuners out there, listeners and viewers, tuners, we call you. Um, you know, I had an impoundment situation happen to me just a, a, a few weeks back. And I know Sergeant Randy Franklin and I know his message, yet I still felt intimidated by the motorcycle officer who said, I do have this right. I pointed at the sign to the private parking. I said, hey, I have a sticker in my car to park the car here. Hey, I pay the uh, for parking here when all the other visitors do not. I'm not a visitor. When you visit the parking lot of the Paradise Building, where LAX is established, you don't have to pay. But as a tenant, I do. So I am a tenant. Why would you be patrolling my lot? I went through the entire gamut of panic thoughts that I came up with but the fact of the matter is I really didn't want to challenge him and I'm going to keep this really real mm -hmm. and for those of you out there who may have been in similar circumstances I just put the phone number back up on the screen I didn't really want to take him to the limit with like get me your supervisor 
No, you can just say maybe I'm a coward, well, and no. I'll own that on global broadcast. But, but maybe I was intimidated. I'll own that on global broadcast. But to what degree do we have the right to demand that a supervisor get involved when they could just say, "I tell you what, you smell like," or "Your tag is expired. I can lock you up," and then you say, "No, you can't." Here's get your deal. supervisor, and then all of a sudden you're in cuffs and you're in the county. Here's the deal by our manual. A policeman will be suspended if you ask for a supervisor and he does not get you one. But if I'm already in jail and he gets you know suspended what? weeks later and I've lost my job, my car, and everything else. But, but here's the deal I tell people. How do we rectify that, Sarge? I, I, first, I have to say, I, I say we because I'm. I, You're part of us now. You're right, one of us. Right. No, one because even, even when, I, when I even had a badge, I got pulled over all the time. Did you really? And I never identified myself. I even was really? racial profiled, and they want they suspended me, even though the officer said he stopped me basically because I was black, which is a violation of the law. While you are in fact a, a LAPD officer. Wow. You a can, badge carrying LAPD. Remember, I, we, he didn't know. I lived in L, I lived in South Central LA my whole career as a policeman. Hmm. If you Google me, the house I lived in, that's the one they surrounded fifty officers with when they feel figured out I lived there because they figured I had the means to move out. Some of them figured I had the means to move in Ladera Heights, if you know what that at, or other places where it's expensive. And I did. I didn't want to move because I felt comfortable. We mean that, remember, I, I grew up in the 60s, the 50s, 60s, and 70s, where I, I heard the songs from Jane Brown, where I'm black and I'm proud. And I knew the turmoil that went on in the projects because I grew up in the Chicago projects uh, before I went down to race in Mississippi as a teenager. So when I say we, I mean us, minorities. And then I decided that the people, the people, the that, people, right. We the people, because it seems that despite our numbers, our lack of wealth make us minorities anymore. And I don't mean just black. Anymore. I mean, everybody. I mean, everybody, everybody in America It really is us against them. It's the one percenters in the ninety nine. Absolutely. And I want people to know we the people. As, as we state, are the poor people. And that's why you see the revolt going on to this day. But that's why I said we. To this day, I still get stopped. And I don't identify myself. Because I want to know why you stopped me first. I'm not going to cause any problems. I'm the nicest guy to the police. You know I'll exactly hand them what whatever do. they want. I, I did that at the time they wanted to spend me for seven days after being racially profiled. I was on the wrong side of town. And they didn't know I was and a police officer. For our tuners out there who may be visiting <laughs> Los Angeles this weekend, what part of town is that? I was in right? West L.A., Venice Beach area, coming, wow. just coming home. In fact, I wasn't even coming home. I was coming from a police. I was coming from the Museum of Tolerance <laughs> when I was stopped. On, on, How on, ironic. It was, a, it was a training day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when I was racially profiled for being on the west side of town after coming from the Museum of Tolerance. And How even, ironic. And even though we proved that How the police. How ridiculous, in fact. That's not even ironic. No. It's just straight up ridiculous. And we proved that they lied about everything they, they said. And they said, well, you're off duty. You're a sergeant. I said, I'm off duty, which means I asked for a supervisor. But th that's another story. Did the supervisor come? Yeah, he came. All right. And then so, what happens when the supervisor does get there? Well, when the supervisor comes now, you hope the supervi supervisor know the law. Has enough sense. And, and this is where I say if you don't know your rights, you don't have any rights. You, act, you actually have to tell the supervisor why he violated your rights. Now, if, if I look at it this way. If they need to take me to jail, take me. I feel like, shit, I'm marching in the 1960s with Martin Luther King. Because eventually, I'm going to prevail. And eventually, I'm going to get you. So, And then you file a complaint against them, and you watch the complaint. Now, everybody knows the police try to cover the police. But if you know the law so well that they can't cover each other. So when I say we, I'm talking about me and you because I've been pulled over a lot of times for driving the wrong car in South Central, for, for driving this way in South Central, they'll pull you over. So we. So what I did was I studied the law tooth and nails. And I knew this was going to happen to me because I told Rich before in, 19, in 1987 in South Central L.A., I had a partner of mine that tried to tell me the difference between a black man and a nigger. And he had to take me back to the station. Say, I mean, that's when they tried to get you to come Meaning over inside. Meaning you had to punch him out. No, I did not. <laughs> okay. I just told him once he explained that to me, I was going to explain some things to him. And he didn't like 
that I was what going to say? explain what I said to him. So he took me back and we were not partners anymore. Wow. So, but that's why I say we. But what that taught me was to protect my own ass. And protecting it meant that I had to study day and night the manuals, the policies, procedures, and the law. And that's what I bring to this show. 30 years of studying these documents that I'm telling you about. And I'm telling you so you can not walk out the station. Because when you walk out the station, it defeats you. The police are clapping in the background, cheering mm. that you walked out the station. Talk about that. And, and you walk out, and we do. And, and it, it, it makes you disheartened about the police. It makes you go home. It makes you angry for days. You're disconnected. Right. You, you don't you, want to support. You don't want to support. But if you know your rights and stand up for your rights, they're going to get the lieutenant, ask for the captain. If a sergeant can't do it, ask for a lieutenant. If he don't understand the law, then, then you get the captain. But that's why I say don't go in there with stuff off the wall that you don't know what you're talking about because you can sit there and argue all day if you don't know the law. But if you take the paperwork I tell you to take to the station, you are empowered now because they can't get around their own policies and procedures that are written down in black and white. And you can read. So when they tell you this don't apply, read the whole law and say, no, go here. And this is it. When I talk to you uh, about your stuff, you have them beat. They're beat already. They have to bring your car back. They got to pay for it. And, and, and there's no ignorance in, in that. And this, and this policeman, if he's continually driving around looking for your cars, then you need to stop him. We need to correct the police behavior. That's what we need to do. And that's why I say we and I say impounds. And today, I'm going to teach you impounds. I'm going to tell you the laws. And we're going to do a quick check of things that got to get your car back, like driver arrested. They got to give your car back to you. They need to pull it over and park it. If you, the police get behind you, remember, they can't stop your car. I don't want you to go in pursuit of nothing. Find a legal parking spot and pull in it. That's all you got to do. If you can pull into a shopping center, you got an hour before they can tow your car. So pull in it. Th those are the things I'm going to teach you about. So pull over. Don't be nasty. Give him your stuff. He's going to write you a ticket. Let him write you a ticket. But we're talking about keeping your car from being impound, costing you an extra two, three, four, five hundred dollars in impound fees or a thousand. I thought you were going to say two, three, four, five thousand, because once those uh, days stack up and then the tow charge and then the release charge and then the court costs, it could cost you seven thousand dollars for an old beat up jalopy just to get it back. I've, I've been there. I've experienced it Uh then it seems, once again, vehicles for ransom. Let me put that up for you guys out there. See if I can get that on the screen. Vehicles for ransom. They take these cars, man, and I don't know where they go, Sarge. Where do they go? They go to auction. To auction. They go to auction. And how much money does the city make off it? I guess it has to count on balance. Some of the mistakes that the city has made <laughs> in confisc confiscating some of these cars. And so that all balances out in the wash. Is baked in the cake when it comes to taking your car. And there is a system in place, dare I say. Uh, that system is, if you have an older car, to me, and I'm, you know, you can come out to, look, okay, let me get on camera here real quick. Let me break this down for these people out there. Hey, man, ever been to L.A.? Ever lived here? Let me tell you something, man. You could come here and buy a Beautiful Mercedes Benz for just a few thousand dollars. You could floss and boss and drive that car around town. But by the time that car comes up for small check, if you know what to do with that Benz to get it clear smog mm -hmm. or BMW to get it clear smog or any number of older cars that you can buy in this city very cheap, that look real good, that have only been exposed to the beautiful California weather, that you're driving around feeling good about. Man, if you ever go to these impound lots and look at the cars they collect there, they are the best collectors of cars. And one of the easiest traps is that whole smog check thing. At least it was for my dumb ass. Pardon my French but, out there for all the kids in the room. But I've been that dumb. And I'm like, oh, I'll get a smog later. Oh, it don't stink that bad. Uh, it's pretty clean. But just that element alone, you wind up 
going through this entire purgatory of redemption, Ooh. trying to get that car back or just saying the heck with it. But what they got to know is, remember this, your registration before you can be towed has to be six months and one day. Is that true, Sarge? Absolutely. 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 That current, that's it's current right law. here, special order number seven. Speak on it. I, I mean, give, you, them the, give them the uh, citation. I told them it's LAPD, go to special order number seven. For 4,000 A, your vehicle got to be six months and a day past your registration before it can be impounded. It doesn't mean you can't get a ticket on it. And the racket he's well, that's a fix it ticket at that point, right? Well, yeah, More we or less. fix your car six right. months in a day. Now, Get it after, together, pal. After your car is towed, we take it to the impound lot. Now, it's towed for registration. But here's the deal with the racket is the impound yard will sell that car to someone, and it's still not registered. And you have to remove, you have to remove that car that day from the impound lot. <laughs> so... You're buying a car with no registration, and that cycle just keep repeating itself because if that person can't get registration on the car, then it'll be impound again. So it just the cycle just keep repeating itself over and over again. But what I want you to know. Sarge, you just spoke so viscerally to the racket of it all because the fact is that's really how it works. A yes. lot of people go buy these old used cars out here because it's such a... There's so many of them. Right. This is a car town. There's so many cars out here that get recycled to people. Right. Particularly transplants who don't know the law. And even for um, indigenous folks who, who born and raised out here who know the law but try to skirt it, maybe try to cheat a little bit. Right. That cycle completes itself 360 each and every time virtually. Every day. Because so important that you point that out. Absolutely. Because when you go to an impound, let's say you go to DMV. DMV might give you a 30-day sticker, but if it, it took this person six months, he couldn't do it. You got 30 days to do it. After your 30 days, the police can impound that car because it's more than six months in a day. So that car is go back to the same impound they just sold it, and they can sell it again. But what I want you to remember is six months and a day. And remember, remember if you if you don't have any priors, your vehicle can Cannot be told almost. I'm going to tell you right now. If you get drunk driving, they need to pull it over. You can call someone. Unlicensed driver, you can you can uh, call someone. You can find someone walking down the street and say, hey, man, you got a valid driver's license. He say, yes. Uh, you know, uh, could you drive my car to the parking lot and park it for me? He can say yes. And he can. the police have to give your car to whoever you say should have your car. And that's why I tell everyone, if you think you, you're going, oh, no, that's not right. Remember, LAPD special order number seven is on the Internet for you. And it just came out of the California Supreme Court last year. So it is valid. All you got to do is read it for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Read it for yourself is all I'm telling you. That's all I'm saying. And then um, when we come back, we'll probably take a break. We're going to talk about can you park your car? On, on on public lots like supermarkets, you know, you see those say 15 minute park and we can tow your car. I want you to know we come back. I'm going to tell you that they can't tow it for an hour and how to get your car back from them. Cause those are the biggest crooks of all. And uh, uh, when we come back from our break, I'll give you another example of my friend who just did it a couple of weeks ago and uh, how it worked to his favor. So, uh I guess we're going to take a break. It is a special edition of Probable Cause with the one and only Sergeant Randy Franklin, 30 years retired from LAPD, kicking the science here tonight, man. You know, we call ourselves the Truth Network, Reality Radio, handcrafted, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. You see me on the board. You see us on the mic. We make it do what it do. Get this knowledge. We're going to give you one last time to tune in and call in. Because this might not be valuable to you now, but come Tuesday, you might need to holler at your boy, Sergeant Randy Franklin. So give us a call after the break, 323-473-3100, 323-473-3100, Sergeant Randy Franklin in full effect tonight. And at the uh, top of the 6 o'clock hour, guess what, I'll be back doing a live episode of Speak On It, Say It, Own It, Believe It. And we have the incredible gentlemen and women of our official sponsor for tonight, 
the SoCal Noma 2016 Summer Camp will be live in the studios with us at 6 p.m. as I return at that hour. But right now, the matter at hand is probable cause with Sergeant Randy Franklin. Do not go away. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Are you in pain? Don't wait. Call 818 939 9398. Are you suffering from pain in your back, neck, muscles, or joints? Then let our team of expert doctors at Innovative Pain and Spine Physicians determine the cause of your pain. Innovative Pain and Spine Physicians is located in the greater Los Angeles area and is comprised of Happy Health Radio's host, Dr. Jay Villanueva, and his highly esteemed colleague, Dr. Matthew Root, who are both board-certified physicians in pain medicine and interventional pain management. We are here to listen to your pain symptoms, perform the appropriate physical and diagnostic exams, and create a safe treatment plan tailored to your specific needs. We accept Medicare and most private insurances and have flexible appointment hours. So if you got pain, don't wait. Call 818-939-9398 to make your appointment today so you can get your life back. Again, if you're in pain, don't wait. Call 818-939-9398. SoCal NOMA, the Southern California chapter of the National Organization of Minority Architects, is hosting its seventh annual three-day summer camp on three successive Saturdays, July 9th, July 16th, and July 23rd for ages 10 through 15, with a reception and award ceremony on July 30th at Southern California Institute of Architecture. Campers will enjoy a one-day field trip created to engage new ideas for famous and important local community projects. Day two of the camp will be hands-on exploration of the campers' innate qualities as it relates to building design experience. And day three will include learning how to use a three-dimensional computer software program to create the built environment. To learn more and to register, go to SoCalNOMA.org, that's S-O-C-A-L-N-O-M-A dot org, and click on the Camp NOMA page. Be sure to register today at SoCalNOMA.org. SoCal NOMA, proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. Hey, shout out to our Worcester Count. I'm Ferran Dozier. And I'm your boy, Cali Sportsman, inviting you to join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific on the Sports Lounge Live. Explore the world of sports from amateur to the pros, the community on a global level, relevant sports news. And guess what? We even have live studio guests. So don't forget to tune into the Sports Lounge Live every Saturday, 2 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the America Talk Live broadcast network. Reality radio handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live. And we are more than just talk. Hey, hey, shout us out. What's the count? I'm your host. I am WDC. Tune in to WDC Radio on LA Talk Live every Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for sickle cell trade awareness, lupus, bullying, mental health, and all different aspects of life. So tune in to WDC Radio right here on LA Talk Live. 
Also, you can listen to us on iTunes, Live 365, YouTube, and Ustream. And don't forget Apple TV and Roku right here on LA Talk Live where we're more than just talk. Shout us out. What's the count? Welcome back. Yeah, it's all fun and games until your car is impounded and you in county jail for the entire weekend on 4th of July 2016 here in L.A. Don't do it. <laughs> all right. And if you do, guess what? You tuned in to the world's only uh, L.A. Talk Live reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. The absolute world leader in Internet broadcast. And yours truly, Richard Carr, moderator for tonight's special episode of Probable Cause with yours truly, Sergeant Randy Franklin. Thank you. And thank this you. man knows of which he speaks. Yeah. In the background, Ludacris, it's Saturday. Well, right now it's Friday. But tomorrow night, don't do it. <laughs> you better get your uh, mind right and you better learn your rights. And if you ain't tuned in right now... You better tune in tomorrow or later tonight when this show uh, is live to tape and it's recorded and goes up on YouTube and Ustream. And all y'all out there are, are flossing in Boston right now on a Friday night. It's Saturday. You're locked up. Ooh, ooh. Better call Randy Franklin. <laughs> anyway, so welcome back to the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to talk about your rights, you know. And if you don't know your rights, you ain't got no rights. And this is a very special edition of uh, Probable Cause. You might know Randy Franklin from such shows as Probable Cause. He's back in town this weekend, took some time out of his busy um, advocacy uh, schedule to talk about the notion of knowing your rights. I mean, that's real simple. That's really not that complicated. Knowing your rights. If you don't know your rights, you don't have it any don't rights. It take a lot of math and calculation to figure out, I ain't got no rights if I don't know my rights. Because if you don't know your rights, they're yeah. always going to get left off the equation. So let's add that to the equation and help empower you to empower yourself. You're intelligently tuned to the world in internet broadcast. And the reason we call you that, call ourselves that rather, is because we are the world leader in the truth movement we help educate people about health wellness financial success personal power and tonight with randy franklin what are your rights you know you're going to have yourself a beer um even if you're a senior driving home from your family them barbecue you know you might have yourself a little glass of wine even if you're a tweener um, driving home from the picnic in the park, you know you might have yourself a shot of Henny if you're grown and sexy like me at the spot. We're not going to tell you about right now, but we'll give out the details later. If you get pulled over, you better know your rights. Now, listen, if you're drunk and driving, you ain't got no rights. If you're buzzing driving, no rights. Don't do it is my point. So what is Saturday? So what is Friday? So what is Sunday? So what is Monday? And what the heck? Do you want to wind up in jail Tuesday? Sergeant Randy Franklin is not here to explain to you how to avoid those pitfalls. But if, in fact, you are sober and park your car on the Ralph's parking lot across from the Paradise Building and you got hung up in the supermarket because the lines were too long and an hour went by and they towed your car and impounded it, he's going to tell you how to get it right back the same day. Here we go. I'm talking to you. Word to the motherland. About uh, the, the impounds. Before we get off of that real quick, I told you about special order number seven. And remember, LAPD special order seven. What I want you to do is go ahead and, and uh, download that or read it. The, the back two pages of page number seven give you everything I talked about on the show. But what I want you to do is go to the front page and go down to the very bottom of it and look at the community caretaking doctoring. That's when we say if to towing your car cause harm to you or the community, Therefore, we will not tow it. So I want you to remember that, and I want you to use that. 
I don't want anybody to walk into your police station, and I say your police station because you pay for it, and feel threatened by it. Imagine this is your police station. Why would you be afraid to go in there or let anybody threaten you inside of your police station? Everyone says it's yours. Your, your, your police chief, your captains of the station, your community advocate people say it's yours, your city council. So why would you feel afraid? They're going to your police station. I dare someone that threatened to handcuff you when you come into your police station asking about your rights. And I want you to be prepared. That's why I want you to research stuff before you go in the police station. Never be afraid to talk to a supervisor at a police station. And here's another tip for you. Our dumbest and our brightest are at the front desk. And, and I say that because I don't want to talk bad about police, but I'm going to tell you why. A policeman goes to academy, spends six months at academy, and then for the next year, we run him around like, yes, sir, up to one, two, three, four, five, because he's trying to get off probation. And during that time, he's not studying anything, really. They're not studying anything. And as soon as they get off probation, the first place we stick them with their lack of knowledge is the front desk to greet you when you come in. They basically don't know a damn thing. And you listen to them. I had an officer tell me, because she went from South L.A. to West L.A. Or the West Side. And she told me that she was going back to 77 Division. Because the people at 77 Division don't question what she says. And I told her they should question what you said. Because everything you say is wrong. Because you don't have a bit of knowledge in your head. She just thought that that badge meant that you're not to question her like your parent, even when you were right. So when you go to the front desk, you want to talk to someone senior. And if you have done your research and they don't give you what you want or they're talking to you like you're crazy, I want you to ask for the watch commander to come up. And. If he don't, if you're showing him proof of what you're saying in black and white, and he's still trying to blow smoke, you say, I, I need to speak to the captain. And, and at that point in time, I want you to know everybody in the police station has disrespected you. Everyone. Therefore, you need to make a complaint against those individuals to get their head right for the next person that comes into the station. We got to stop turning around, walking out of police station, being afraid when we're asking the police to provide service to us because we pay them to provide service. Police get paid a lot of money. And if they're scared of being a policeman, there's always another job they can go get. All right. But don't let anybody disrespect you in or out of a police station, and especially in a police station, because it took a lot of courage for you to come to the police station in the first place. All right. Don't walk out. But I want you to look at that. And now we're going to go to public. I want to talk about parking your car in a public parking lot that's open to the public. Now, there are tow companies out there, banded tow companies, who will rip you off all of the time. And this is what they really, really don't want you to know. And you can Google it, too. You just go to L.A. towing regulations and it will come up. Everything that I'm telling you now. Regardless of the sign that's posted out there in front, if you're not blocking the driveway, blocking a fire hydrant, or parked inside of a handicap, and if you do those three things, your car will be gone in a minute. Not an hour, a minute. So please be careful where you park that. But once the parking lot is open to the public, you have one hour before they can tow your car. You have a whole hour, not 15 minutes or 20 minutes, or somebody say, I ran across the street and I came back and you towed my car. Because some people say, if you leave my property, I'm going to tow your car. You can tow it if you want to. But the law states if they legally tow your car, they got to pay you twice the money it costs you to get your car back. And that's the law. All right. You have one hour. Now, I'll tell you a story. I have my friend who talked to me about this uh, about six months ago. Two weeks ago, he parked across from the Compton Court. And he walked in and dropped off something, came back to the Kentucky Fried Chicken that he was at. And his car was on the toke. 
He told the tow truck to give him back his car. He refused. He requested the police. The police showed up. The police tried to convince my friend that it was a legal tow and it was on the tow truck. And my friend said, that's fine. I just need the person that told him to tow the car to come out from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, understand this. A tow company has to have a written agreement with that business on file. And then somebody has to tell them to tow the car. That means an employee from that business got to come tell the tow company to tow it. He can't tow it on his own saying that there is an agreement out there with the company to tow the car. He must have a PR, a person reporting from that business or agent of that business, or he have to give you back your car. And he have to give it back to you for free. So continuing my story, my friend told the, the, the sheriff, he said, all I need him to do is show me the Kentucky Fried Chicken employee that told him to tow my car. If not, he needs to give me back my car. So the police went to his radio, contacted his dispatch and came back and told the tow driver that he has to give him back his car. And the tow company refused. So the police told him, you either give him back his car or I will arrest you and tow your tow truck. So they gave him back his car. Now, this occurred about 10 years ago when I was a sergeant. In West L.A., when tow companies were hooking up cars in the middle of the night because people went to party and they were doing all kind of things. Remember, they need an agent of that company. So if let's say the business is closed for the night at eight o'clock or six o'clock and you park there and you go party and come back at three, your car should be there. Unless the tow company can prove to you that somebody called him when was there. So I asked the tow, com the tow truck driver to tell me who gave him this lady's car. So I sent an officer back to the parking lot and there was no security guard and no one told him to give it back. Now it's locked behind their gates. So I asked the owner and the tow truck driver to return the lady their car and they told me no. So I arrested the tow truck driver who 10851 stolen vehicle because he stole it because nobody told him to take it. He's taking the vehicle without somebody's permission. And I impound the tow truck and then I told the owner that he can open the gates and give the person back their car or I'll take him to jail for receiving stolen property. He refused. I cut the lock, gave her back her car and took him, took him to jail for receiving stolen property. Those that's the law. And that's the letter of the law. And I repeated this until the district attorney told me to stop and they rewrote these laws. So when I tell you this, that if somebody got your car, they have to, by law, give you the name and number of the person from the private place, like the Ralphs or someone that authorized the tow of your car. If not, they cannot tow your car. You have an hour to put your car down and tow companies, when they get to the lot, they, the tow company responsibility is to find the agent of the company and that agent have to prove to the tow company that your car has been there an hour. So they have to have video proof or something that states that this car has been in for an hour. We want that car towed. Now, remember the fines. There are tow companies now that's being prosecuted all over the place because they're bandit tows. They're towing your car with any, without any PR or anyone there. Remember, OPG, if you park on the side of the street from 4 to 6, they just can't pick up your car. They need DOT to be there before they can pick up your car. These, these bandit tow companies are the ones that's being prosecuted right now because uh, they're not supposed to take your car. But the problem is you don't know the law. You don't know how much time you got. You don't know that he needs a person there to tell him to tow the car. He just can't say a sign posted. And because of that sign and I have some written, I can take your car. He cannot. He must have that second element, a person that gives him your car. And if the business closed for the night, unless they have a roving security guard that comes, call the tow truck, stays there, then they can't tow your car either. But this, if you cross the street and be gone for five minutes, I'm going to tow your car. No one can do that. And that's why I say, just don't believe Randy Franklin. Go to your computer and just type in what I asked you to type in. Type in LAPD special order number seven and please read it and type in LA toll regulations. And it, it, it's just simple reading. And 
it empowers you. It empowers your family, your friends. When they say they got their car towed, you can say, read this special order number seven. They're not allowed to take your car. They're not allowed to tow your car. If you just do those simple things, you'll realize that unless you have priors, your car almost can never be towed in the city of Los Angeles because they're tired of losing impound uh, hearings. And, and I, a lot of people know about impound hearings. A lot of people don't. Whenever you read what I told you to read and it does not apply to you, you have to go to the station. And remember, 24 hours a day, you can have an impound hearing. You don't have to wait till the next day. If the auto detectives are gone, the, remember what I told you about the people at the front desk, they don't really know. You ask for a supervisor and you tell the watch commander and the supervisor that you want an impound hearing right now because you want your car out right now. And in most cases, they're not, if they legally towed your car, they should take it back to where you got it from if you don't have a ride there. But most people just want to go to the impound and all you got to do is show them the piece of paper from the impound hearing. They will bring your car to you. Zero fees to you. Zero. You have to pay nothing for your car back. Now, the taxpayers eat uh, that uh, that fee. And that's you, the taxpayers. You eat every fee, everything we do wrong on the police department. You eat those fees. So we don't eat any fees or pay for anything. That's why we were talking earlier about the new law I'm passing to correct that behavior too. Got to stop that loophole right now. So, but that's another story. So what we want to do today is empower you. If you go out and you get incarcerated, try not to have your car incarcerated too. You don't have enough problems already uh, without having a problem with your car because regardless of uh, what you did, you might still have to go to work the next day, especially if you uh, took too much in to drink. You still got to go to work Tuesday and you need your car to go to work. So understand about your car. Have your car parked. Have somebody come pick up your car. Tell them, I got a friend that's going to pick it up. If you can legally have it pulled on the side of the street, you can do that too. So that's what the police do. You say across the street, there's legal parking until 8 o'clock in the morning. That gives me my friend till 8 o'clock to come get my car. All right. You can leave your keys with your property at the front desk. So whoever comes can take your property from you and go get your car and you can leave your wallet and everything else. So somebody to pick up your properties, just say, I want someone else to pick up my my uh, my property and get your car back. Remember, if you don't have priors, we're supposed to give you back your car or let you legally park your car. If you're driving your car. And you know you, you don't have a valid license or suspended and you don't have any priors. You never got a ticket for it. Pull over into a legal parking stall. Never go past the speed limit and park your car legally. All right. Therefore, they can write you a ticket and your car can stay there until you call someone. All right. That's what we want you to do. And remember, most most uh, uh, 12,500 days and unspended license is a ticket. We'll give those to you. And you're on your way. Uh, I hope that I have answered most of the questions that you have about impounds and private impounds. Uh, remember, you have an hour. The only, the only exception I got to give you, if an apartment complex of 15 or more units, try not to park in their stalls because those stalls belong to the tenants and therefore you can be told. There's a few things they have to do, but try not to park at anybody. That's just downright rude if you go to somebody's apartment complex and park in their stall. I, I personally think you should be told. So uh, try not to do that. That's the exception to the rule. They can't tell you for that reason alone. All right. I hope I've answered all your impound questions. Uh, me and Rich want to touch on something again really quickly before we get out of here for his next show. Uh, we're going to touch on the Freddie Graves stuff really quickly. And uh, I'm going to answer four questions that show you that every policeman in that situation should be booked. Uh, but you don't ask the right questions. Remember what I tell people all the time. Uh, you know, we, 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 uh, ignorance is expensive. I tell people you pay for what you don't know. So, uh, we're going to dab off on that really quickly. Uh, we're going to touch on the well, Freddie Gray. Let, let's do that. Sarge. I, I, I really thought that it was interesting that you want to talk about that topic tonight on, uh, your special presentation and, uh, many months have gone by. Certainly the trial has occurred. Uh, we know that uh, certain officers were uh, acquitted. Yes. Um, we saw the video. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you how do you weigh in on Th this? That's what I tell people all the time. I, I want you to listen very carefully, very carefully. 
You got to understand that when the police go on trial, there's no one representing the victim. And I dare anybody to say so, the city council or, or the district attorney. And this is how it works. When a policeman go on trial, we have a powerful union. And our powerful unions all across the country give us powerful attorneys. So our attorneys represent us. We have a really good attorney. And at no cost. And at no you. cost to me. Again, no cost to the police. Now, now, my friend who I've been working with all my career, basically, putting bad guys in jail. That's their district attorney. And his, and his deputy district attorney. Those have been my friends all these years. My friend got to prosecute me against my powerful attorney. So you have nobody representing the victim. And I want you to know, and I'm going to tell you why. Because this Freddie Grave case is so simple that I can't believe that two of them have already got off. And it ticks me off that they got off. And, and, and we don't need to march and burn nothing up. Just answer your four questions with us. Now, what we fail to keep understanding is, I know Freddie died in the back of the police car. But the question is, why was Freddie chased in the first place? Now, they're going to tell you Terry versus Ohio, which doesn't apply to this case because Terry versus Ohio state that police must have specific and articulable facts before they can chase you. Not just look at you and you run and they can chase you. Remember what I said, specific and articulable facts. So, again, go to Google and Google Terry versus Ohio and you'll see that did not apply to Freddie Gray. And if anybody know anybody in Baltimore, please tell them to listen to this show. Please. Now, here are four questions you have to ask yourself about these policemen. The first question is, is it against the law not to wear a seatbelt in Baltimore? Is it against the law in any state not to wear a seatbelt? The answer is basically yes. What they say, click it or tick it. So if you don't, you don't wear a seatbelt, it breaks the law. Even if it's laws are infractions, misdemeanors and felony, but it's the law. So did they break the law? Yes. Now, the second question you ask yourself is, did anyone violate their policies and procedures by not belting Freddie Gray in, in the back of a police car? And I'm going to tell you, as long as I've been a policeman, I had to make other policemen, even as a supervisor, buckle you in the back of a police car. It seems the only time this law does not apply is when you're in custody. Police will drive you all over the city in the back of a police car and you're not seatbelted in. But that violates the law. They have to seatbelt you in. It violates the law, their policies and procedures. The third question is, by them violating the law, their policies and procedures, did it cause harm to someone? Yes, it killed Freddie Gray. So that's negligence. So on these questions alone. Did they violate the law? Yes. Did they violate their policies and procedures? Yes. And did by them violating those two, did it cause injury to someone else? Yes, it killed Freddie Graves. So how can they not be guilty? It's just that simple. And the whole time, I'm going to tell you why the DA is our friend. Because no one asked the driver that drove Freddie to his death, did you put your seatbelt on when you got in the car and drove Freddie around to his death when him bouncing in the back of your car? Did you seatbelt in? And the answer to that is, yes, he put on his seatbelt. So why he didn't put Freddy's on shows pure negligence. But yet, they keep getting acquitted. So how can any judge or anybody be on Freddie Graves' side say that the questions I answered, the four questions, why nobody have asked those questions? If you ask those four questions, they are 100% guilty, all of them. So I hope somebody in Baltimore will make up a sign with the four questions. Is it against the law not to wear a seatbelt? Does it violate policies and procedures of their police department? And did that cause somebody harm? And the answer is yes. And then ask the driver, did you put on your seatbelt? And the answer to that will be yes. So those are the questions I want you to know. Remember, like I said in Ferguson, the, the question was count every round. We didn't count every round. So those are the things you should know about the about this situation. I tell you all the time. But Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, a very special edition of Probable Cause with the one and only Sergeant Randy Franklin. A rousing round of applause for you, Sarge, for joining us here today, taking time out. 
Do you have some more comments before we close out? Oh, yeah, really quickly. I want people to go to my Facebook page, Pia Justice. It is Pia's Police Liability Insurance Act and the last name Justice. On that is a law I'm trying to get passed. And I just need you to go to my webpage and you have to do nothing else but like it because I need three million people plus. So when I go to the politicians, if you like what you read about the law and it's there in black and white, please like the page. Uh, do what you can to help us out because what we need to do is get this on the ballot. All right. Make the police accountable for their own actions. So please go to PR Justice, P-L-I-A, and and uh, and uh, do a like for me. That's all I'm asking. Join me in my campaign. I just need a couple of million people. So when I talk to the politicians, I can say you have my back. One more time. Sorry. Give it to them again. It's going to be the first name in there is, is P-L-I-A. And the last name is Justice. Police Liability Act. And we want justice. Police Liability, liability Insurance Act. Insurance, insurance P-L-I-A. Act. P-L-I-A. Police Liability Insurance, insurance Act. Act. And then they just put the initials in there. And the last word is justice. justice. And I love please it. read the community page. Please. And tell me what you think of it. And go like it, folks. Yes, please. That's all I'm asking for you. Hey, listen. This might sound like um, just uh, some ancillary stuff for you tonight. But in fact, it's very critical and very visceral to your lifetime. This is Sergeant Randy Franklin, 30 years experience on the streets of L.A. as the tip of the spear of the Los Angeles Police Department. And once again, a rousing round of applause Thank for joining you. us Thank here you. and sharing your knowledge here in our studio tonight. Wow. Sarge, we got to have you back. You know, this conversation never ends. Um, let us know when you're ready to come back and we'll have you back again. That's just how we got to do it. Thank you. Thank so the you. message gets out. Absolutely. All Please. right, folks, you've been listening to Sergeant Randy Franklin, very special edition, Probable Cause. Uh, and that's our show for that tonight. But stay tuned. Coming up at the top of the hour at 6 p.m., yours truly. I'll be right back. I'm going overtime tonight. I've got the gentlemen and ladies of Southern California National Organization of the Minority Architects who are going to be joining me live in the studio tonight with some students and parents. And Larry Hewley will be our special guest host. And, of course, a little later on in the show, we're going to have uh, the one and only Ilya Daly. No Filter is going to be my special guest host tonight on the show as well. So stay tuned. We've got more great programming coming up. 8 p.m. tonight, we got the Wild and Wooly Wolf's Den. It don't end. We're going late. We're going long. So stay tuned. We'll be back. Enjoy the music in the meantime. This is our show for tonight. This will be up on YouTube and Ustream later. If you missed any portion of it, it's called Probable Cause with Sergeant Randy Franklin, a very special edition. And again, thank you, Sarge, for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. We'll see you next time, my brothers and sisters. Know your rights. Fight the power as yeah. you see it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Peace and love, everybody. Have a safe weekend. Happy Fourth of July. We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk.